is difficult to get humans in outer space. It has been very difficult so far. That is somewhat of an understatement. Currently, there are three astronauts in the International Space Station orbiting the Earth at this very moment, um, but they're not particularly far away from us. They're only about 300 kilometers off the Earth's surface. They are in an environment that's not particularly comfortable. It can be termed, I suppose, as one of survival. But there are some pretty ambitious plans afoot to send people further than they've ever been before, deep into the solar system, to places such as Mars, for instance. And this is really exciting to me. The issue is, though, we shouldn't be just concerned with these spaces as survival spaces or survivalist spaces. We should be concerned with these spaces as spaces that are conducive for living a life. Because these individuals have to leave this planet, this tiny rock, for a considerable amount of time. I believe that architecture can play a very important role in this. But if you think getting humans into outer space is difficult, getting architecture into outer space is another level of difficulty again. Architecture has a reputation for being unnecessarily difficult, unnecessarily complex, unnecessarily expensive, superfluous even. I don't subscribe to this understanding of architecture whatsoever. I believe that architecture can and should be experienced by all and any. I believe that architecture ultimately is about making people's lives better. And it can do this in many ways. So I would like to share with you five ideas that I've had for introducing architecture into outer space, as it were. And these ideas, they're not particularly obvious ideas. In fact, you could understand them to be a little bit sneaky. So I would like to begin by showing you an image, um, clearly not of space. This is an image of a balcony. It's currently my favorite space on the planet Earth. And I studied architecture, and I chose this apartment because of very specific architectural qualities. It faces north, which is great in the southern hemisphere because it keeps the harsh summer sun out. It allows the low winter sun in, so it makes it a space that I can appreciate year-round. It's got a great view. It's got a brick balustrade that I can peer over, so it gives me some nice privacy. It's also the perfect height for putting my feet on, so I can sit on that chair and have a coffee and relax. So these are architectural aspects or architectural qualities that make this space great. And it's ways like this and like these, that I believe architecture can make spaces conducive for life and living, for people to venture off our planet. And this is why I'm looking at sneaking architecture into outer space. So, the first of my ideas is this idea of including science fiction. Science fiction is a resource, in fact, for the design of the next generation of space stations. Myself and an architectural colleague, we came across some pretty amazing research into studying the architecture within space stations, within science fiction films over a 50-year period. And they were researching things like the volumes of these spaces, the activities of these spaces, the colors of these spaces, as this table shows, this is the progression of changes of color in interiors of space stations in science fiction films over a 60-year period. And their idea was to use this to design, but ultimately they, they didn't and they couldn't. So naively, myself and an architectural colleague, we thought, well, we'll give it a crack, we'll have a go. And with today's modern architecture, we have been using parametric algorithms, and this is a simple one, to try and include this complex data set into potentially generating the next generation of space station designs. Now, all of these ideas are in their infancy. They are the beginnings of beginnings. So we've only started. And we're trying to make sure we produce rational, realistic interpretations of this information so we can be taken seriously if we find anything interesting. This is where we are so far. We've started to plug this information into the existing International Space Station, and we're starting to plug in simple things like the color and the volume, for instance. So we're really excited to see what we can do with science fiction in reality. The second idea is the idea that we are all still animals, that we all have to, or we can tap into sort of primitive aspects of ourselves to help design future spaces. Myself and a few others are looking at creating a system so we can project very specific images into spaces such as the International Space Station, so extreme environments. We are looking at putting specific images in to elicit certain responses. The system itself isn't particularly important. It's the images and the information within those images that are important. We're looking at using images such as this. This is an image of an African savanna plain. Within images like this, there is a certain complexity known as fractal or bionomic complexity. And this particular image, in fact, can elicit a calm, relaxing response in the viewer. Now, for me as an architect, the images aren't particularly important. But if we extrapolate this geometric data as far as it can go and rebuild it back up again into three-dimensional surfaces, we can potentially create a real, physical, three-dimensional architecture that can be calming and soothing in this extreme environment. So we're quite excited about this. 
The third idea is dressing for the occasion, or actually what you wear may influence or help design the architecture. As it happens in space, you do not need to wear shoes whatsoever. There is no gravity holding you down. You don't need arch support, for instance, when you're floating around, right? You can take the shoes off. So astronauts tend to just get around in their socks. To restrain themselves in microgravity so they don't float around into, you know, bouncing off walls, they attach their feet into restraints, or they hook them under things, um, mobility restraints, or mobility aids, they're called. And they're made of metal. It's not uncommon for astronauts to bump their feet and to get bruises and contusions, which is difficult to heal from in a microgravity environment. And so we've come up with an idea inventing space boots. These space boots are essentially over-engineered socks, and they provide some padding so you don't bruise your feet when you knock them off metal surfaces. And we've thought of putting vulcanized rubber onto the surface here so you can actually use the shoes to sort of stick and push and pull off to, uh, to move around in microgravity space. This isn't particularly architectural, though, so ultimately I believe we would like to see these shoes influence future generations of space station designs, so you could actually get rid of those mobility aids and get rid of those metal rails altogether and have a more calm, clear, rational architecture. The fourth idea is to remember why we're actually going. Um, for me, as an architect, or someone who studied architecture, I'm interested in the social and cultural aspects. I'm interested in actually living and having a life in space amongst the stars. I'm not too concerned with merely surviving. I went to the competition myself and an architectural colleague last year that was asking people to design an outpost on the moon or a project on the moon. And all the entries, they were amazing. They were highly technically resolved. They could all be built highly possible, just give them the funds. But none of them were particularly inviting. I couldn't imagine myself living in any of these projects. So myself and my colleague, we suggested a bridge, a simple bridge you could live within, but a bridge nonetheless, a bridge you could walk across and actually give yourself an experience, something to do. You can imagine life there walking across this bridge. Highly unrealistic, very hypothetical. No one's going to build a bridge in the moon. But it was about living there, about life, the idea of it. We did a bit more research and realized that the moon being much smaller than the Earth meant the horizon line was much closer to the eye of someone on the moon. Here's the bridge, hypothetically under construction in the future. <laughs> this close horizon line meant that if we chose the right crater, we designed the right shaped bridge, here's the entrance to the bridge, and you angle it in the right way towards the Earth, you could actually create a lunar walk. So if you're walking across this bridge on our moon, it would appear as though you're walking towards the Earth. And we thought it was quite a nice gesture to show that it would be nice to have a life on the moon, right? That'd be a cool walk, that'd be a cool thing to do. My fifth idea is to invite others. This is the simplest and perhaps the sneakiest idea because I can get other people to do this sort of work for me, right? Thinking about architecture in space. But I think it's really important because it's really important to see what other people might make of architecture in space and how they might resolve these problems. This is a photograph I took of my fifth year architecture master's design studio. I've charged them with the task of designing a Mars habitat architecture design, of course, and they are working in close conjunction with three space architects from the NASA Johnson Space Center, and they're working very closely with them to realize this. And we're all very excited to see what they will produce, and we have no idea because we're only three weeks into it. So they're happy at the moment, but the stress is yet to hit them. But I'm very excited to see what other people will do with this idea of architecture in space. So to finish, I want you to imagine a precious space, or a space that is precious to you, that you use regularly, every day, not unlike maybe the balcony I showed you before. It could even be, it could be the kitchen table you sit at to read your paper on the weekend with a nice light coming through, whatever it is. Think about how that space is special to you and how it's important in your life and makes your life better, if only for a little bit. And then I want you to ask yourself the question, should we be concerned with designing, creating spaces that are not just about survival, but conducive for living a decent and fulfilled life for people who move off this planet? Should we be concerned about sneaking architecture into outer space? Thank you. <laughs>